Three, two, one. Hey Gettysburg Foursquare family, we're so excited to get to share with you three great ways that your kids can connect with us online each Sunday and almost every day through the week. The first place you can find us is on YouTube at 4SQGberg space kids. Or you can check us out on Facebook at Gettysburg Foursquare Kids. We have our own separate page from the church. The last way is on Instagram. It's the same as YouTube, 4SQGberg, no space, kids. We can't wait to connect with you. Hey kids, we're continuing our story, or our series, I keep saying story. It's alright, right. three, two, one. Hey kids, we're continuing our series on campfire stories, and last week we talked about Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego, and how God saved them from, and protected them from the fiery furnace, and this week we're going to talk about one of their really close friends, Daniel, and how uh, God was just able to protect Daniel during a time that was really, really difficult for him, so I hope you enjoy. <music> Good morning, Galilee! I'm Jedediah. And I'm Yedediah. And we're here to bring you the news on Channel 7, the Galilean Gazette. The holiest news you'll find on your tablet. Today's episode, we are continuing our campfire series. Uh, and as you can tell, we are back outside in the woods. We got Yedediah's fire that he created. Yeah, really feeling the heat off that, aren't you? Uh-huh. Well, it's kids, really as we continue telling you some of the most amazing stories that you'll find in the Bible, we're going to continue that today with talking about Daniel... And it's really cool because last week, if you guys remember, we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how, the, how God was with them when they were thrown into the fiery furnace and how he saved them from that. 
And the cool thing is, they were actually friends with Daniel, which is the story that we're going to dive into today. And it's really cool to see how they can be friends and both went through something challenging. But we're going to see how that story turns out as we dive into that today. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to take a look at this story. And last week was such a good one. And this week, you never know what's going to happen. I would love to see a wild animal or something like that in here. That would definitely spice it up, huh? Well, all we're right. going to dive into the story and see what happens as we continue with this. And out here in the woods, we hear all kinds of sounds. And we see all these different kinds of animals. And, and really what God's done in creation and, and, and building all this and creating all this. Um, so we're going to dive right into the story here. Yada, do you have anything else? I like s'mores. Uh, what? Yeah, they're delicious. All right, well, uh, I'll give you a few dollars here. Uh, you can run to the store, get some supplies, and maybe we'll make up some s'mores. Uh, kids, we're going to jump right into the story for you, and we'll send it right over. Thanks, guys. Yes, this is Barbara Wawa, reporting live here in Babylon. I'm looking for the friend of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His name is Daniel. Daniel was brought here as a captive years ago, and in his time here, he has earned great favor under King Darius. The king trusts him so much, he put him in charge of everything he owns practically. They kind of call it like his kingdom in a way. The thing is though, poor Daniel, he has to spend his time all around people who don't believe in the same God that he serves. So I can imagine that's kind of difficult. That's why I'm here to try to talk to him. Because rumor has it that Daniel sits in his home and he prays three times in an open window facing Jerusalem, which is where he is from. Isn't that wonderful? His faith is amazing. I have to wonder though, with the king putting him in charge of everything and not even being from here, I bet you it causes some jealousy. Well, back to you. I'll let you know when I find him. All right, guys, we just wanted to take this break in the story to come to you guys with news that we talked about last week. We, well, Yeti sent Bob to get some wood, right, for our campfire and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he, we sent him off. I mean, this has been days now. And yeah. there's been no sighting of Bob at all. So we're going to go ahead and run that hotline at the bottom. Uh, if you guys see Bob, have contact with him at all, please contact that number. Let us know because we have no idea where he is. And just in case you guys might not remember, we mm -hmm. do have a photo of Bob that we can put up. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and throw that photo up right here. This is one of the only really photos that we have of Bob. There it is right there. Uh, we had our design people create a new photo that would, you know, if what Bob would look like as of right now. It's been days since we've seen him. Let's go ahead and throw that photo up there. Okay, right this there. This is what we think he this is might what, look exactly. like. Exactly. This is what we think he may look like right now. So let us know. Again, we'll put the hotline at the bottom. If you guys have seen Bob, heard contact of him, anything like that, please let us know. And uh, we, we, we want to find him ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we're going to jump right back into the story. Let's, let's see what these bad guys have to say. Believe it or not, remember me talking about people being jealous of Daniel and the authority that King Darius gave him? I overheard these men griping about him. I wonder what they're saying. I cannot believe Daniel was put in charge over all of us and this kingdom. He's not even from here. We, were, we grew up here, and he's not even ar from around here. Yeah, he is so annoying praying to his God. I, I can't stand it. Well, luckily we set that trap for him. True. And you know what else? It's nice to have the king on our side. You know, we convinced him to make that law so that Daniel can't pray to his God anymore. He's not going to be able to do it. <laughs> For the next 30 days, he can only pray to the king. He cannot pray to his god. And Daniel will not like it when he cannot pray to his god. <laughs> hey, is that Daniel over there? Huh? I think he's praying again. What? Oh, he looks so silly doing that. How can he do it? Let's go. Let's go tell somebody. Oh my gracious, did you hear that? This is terrible news for Daniel. If you're not familiar with the whole decree, what that means is now that Daniel has been caught, he will be put in the lion's den. This is awful news. Oh my word, I'm so worried about him. But we're just going to have to see how this plays out. We're going to learn today, I'm sure more than ever, how God watches over us and protects us. We know that and we believe that. What a day here though in Babylon. It is crazy. Wait, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second, please. Oh my gracious, I just got word that Shelly Grace is over at the palace with the king. Those men have arrived and she's going to do an interview with King Darius now. I wonder what he's going to do. I'm going to send it over to her, guys. Thanks, Barbara. When I first got here, I thought I would go down to the lion's den and interview a lion. Then when I got there, I was like, that's not a good idea. So I decided to come to the palace and interview King Darius. Hi, King Darius. I'm Shelly Grace. Is it okay if I interview you? What? I know it's okay if I interview you. I just have a few questions to ask you about your servant, Daniel. Now. 
How did you feel when you found out the awful news that your favorite employee had broken the, your law? Well, you see, I'll tell I... you how you felt. You felt terrible. You're like, he's my favorite person. I don't want to lose him, but I have to follow the law. Now, are you regretting making that? Hmm. Well, now that I know that you're regretting it. You're thinking, oh my goodness, this is not a good situation. And for a fact, I bet you won't even sleep tonight. Mm -mm, not at all. How sad will you feel when you have to seal that lion's den with Daniel inside? Well, I think I'll, I'll tell you how you feel. You'll feel worse than worse, sadder than sad, like the sun has gone out and it won't shine no more. Back to you guys. As we can see, Daniel's in a situation that was much like our friends from last week. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? See, Daniel was in a position of power, he, and he worked for a king, but that king did not believe in God. Daniel also had enemies that didn't want to see him succeed, or they, they, they wanted to wish him harm, so they created this scheme, right? A, a plan to plot against him to get him thrown into a lion's den, which is just horrible. It's crazy. And... Another crazy thing, I still can't find Bob. He's been missing for all this time. I, I'm not sure where he is. I hope he's okay. Me too. We'll just have to, to hope that, um, and just pray that, and know that God is watching over him, and he will protect him. Absolutely. And just like we see in this story, and last week's story, and I'm talking about Bob right now, God watches over us and protects us. So I believe that God is with Bob, and is protecting him whatever, wherever he is, and whatever's going on. Uh, let's get back to the story. Daniel. I am very sorry that I have made this law that has trapped you and is causing you to be thrown into the lion's den. May the God who you serve protect you and guide you in this. And now we would roll the stone over, close it up, and I will put my seal on it. That night, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, and the king could not sleep. But Daniel was rescued by an angel of the Lord that shut the mouths of the lions. As soon as the morning light came, the king ran into the den and had the stone rolled away and called out to Daniel. Daniel, servant of the living God, has the God whom you worship been able to deliver you and rescue you from these lions? May the king live forever. My God has sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me. What a great story. See kids, God doesn't protect us from every bump or bruise or everything that we come along the course, but as we saw in the story with Daniel, Daniel went through a tough and challenging situation, just like we do, but God continued to be there for him and to deliver him. As Daniel entered the lion's den, the lion's mouths were shut and he was not harmed at all, which is just amazing in itself, and it helps us remember that, you know, we can trust God will be with us just like he was for Daniel, just like he was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from our story last week. And as we go through our lives and we go through situations, again, we may end up going through a tough situation. God may still allow us to go through that, but he will never leave us and he'll continue to give us strength. He'll continue to be there for us to lean on and someone we can trust to deliver us and, and to, things to go according to his plan, which is just great. And kids, remember, God watches over us and protects us no matter where we go or what we're doing. And even with Bob, as we don't know where he is, God is watching over him and protecting him all along. All right, guys, that's going to wrap us up here for Channel 7, the Galilean Gazette. We hope you guys have a great day. Wow, that was so incredible how God was just able to protect Daniel from the, the mouth of the lions and how he was able to send his angel to shut their mouth so that they weren't able to harm him in any way. And that's what God does for us. Sometimes we see stuff and sometimes we, we don't see all the different things that God um, protects us and what. Uh, over each day and I just want you to know that he will always be there with us and he's always there watching over us and protecting us That's right guys. Let's pack it up. All right. Well good broadcast guys. Good job team Let's get this stuff packed up wait guys. Actually, we we just received a call uh, It was actually from Bob Bob from Bob from the hotline uh, yeah, I mean, well, that's great. What's what's going on? He's pretty upset because he said there's all these missing reports out, and people kept on asking him questions. But he's actually uh, on vacation. Vacation? I don't remember him ever seeing anything about a vacation or turning in anything or anything like that. Yeti, do you do you remember seeing anything like that? No. Oh. Flashback. We got a lot of mail this week. Yeah. A little bit of fan mail, bills, all that good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Some of this stuff's not really important. No. Ooh, sail off mana. Okay, mana bread. I like that. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right okay. back.
Ooh, this one's from Bob. Hey guys, I'm going on vacation next week. Hope you guys do well with your broadcast without me. I'll see you in a week, Bob. Interns don't get vacations. That, that That's odd. All right, sorry about that. Uh, anything else interesting come up, nah. important that we need to know? Nope. Okay. Nothing. Just more fan mail. End of flashback. You look a little, you sure you didn't remember seeing anything? Or no, no. Nothing at yeah, all? No, no. I just find it weird that he wouldn't yeah, say anything if he was yeah, actually planning on Very a strange. I, I gotta go. Where are you going? We have to clean. That is what? fine. I... Yeti, where are you going? What's up with him? Oh, well. All right, let's get cleaned up.